Good morning. Um, I'm Dr. Michael Jansen at the Center for Spine and Orthopedics. The Center for Spine and Orthopedics is a center of excellence in evaluating and helping patients with spine conditions. Um, we also have been actively in, uh, involved in FDA clinical trials with a variety of technologies. This morning what I wanted to cover with you is just what are some of the outcomes that we have seen with lumbar disc replacement type surgery um, and what has been recently published and where are we at today in 2016. So disc replacement or total disc arthroplasty isn't just a new product. It's really a change in the overall philosophy of how we manage degenerative disease. Historically, as surgeons, and I've been practicing for about 25 years in the North Denver geographic area, um, we've managed patients with degenerative disc disease with chiropractic care, weight loss, injections, braces, acupuncture, biofeedback, lifestyle modifications. And those that needed surgery usually had two options, either a decompression or a fusion, or a fusion or a decompression. And this is a whole different philosophy of how to manage a disc with its disease with a, mo a device that allows something to continue motion. That's really where we're at to take a look at. Now, there's a big difference. The one on the left is a fusion. The one on the right is a disc replacement. And the patients get confused and they come to me all the time and say, Dr. Jansen, should I have, I don't want a fusion, I want a disc replacement. Or how long is a disc replacement gonna last? Or I read something on the internet that we could go to Europe or go somewhere and get this disc replacement compared to a fusion. And what's FDA approved? And what's my insurance cover and not? So it is somewhat confusing. And a lot of times people only read the abstract and really don't understand all of the options as we're available today for the management of this types of technology. But it's no different than picking out a car, picking out a motorcycle, picking out a home. We look at what is really available and what's best for ourselves, but we use the advice of people, at the, uh, and specifically surgeons, that are at centers of excellence and have a lot of experience in this. Because many times patients will go to a surgeon that only has experience with a fusion, so they will tell patients that's the best treatment for them because they never really had the experience with both. And I think finding centers of excellence that evaluate technology is extremely important. A fusion. We've had experience with fusions for 45, 50 years in the spine for all types of conditions. It locks the spine in that place forever where disc replacement allows the patient to continue to find their balance, continue to move over that segment, just like a total hip or a total knee. And the materials are very, very similar to what we've seen. Now, some of these options don't look like they really fit into a human and they were ideas but the top left one probably has one of the largest experiences in the world called the Lumbar Pro Disc. You can see it's a metal on plastic or metal on polyethylene, which is identical to what is done in most total hips and most total knees. We've seen a lot of, of technology um, in the last uh, few a decade or decade and a half. The FDA clinical trials well, we were really uh, excited about and got involved with over a decade ago, gave FDA approval almost 10 years ago in 2006 for this, the lumbar pro disc. And there's been some other metal on metal tests and, and other processes that it were started FDA clinical trials. But as today in 2016, there are two two disc replacements of all that have went through clinical trials that are FDA approved um, for utilization in North America. The largest experience is the lumbar pro disc, 2006. The active L made by Osculab was recently FDA approved about a year ago and doesn't have the overall experience we have with the, um, the synthes or the pro disc now acquired by Johnson and Johnson, but they're both great technologies and really treat the patient at the right phase of their disease. So what are they? Well, there's different devices have, device, have the way to fix to the spine. Um, the primary, the standard is probably a metal on polyethylene with the right bearing surface that attaches. What did we learn from running all these clinical trials? Well, this is a new, and this study was published in 1990 to 1993 where the 64 patients were done with single disc disease. Um, it, was, it was not randomized, so we consider it a level four evidence. Um, the follow-up was about nine years published, um, and the excellent clinical improvement was excellent to good in about 41 of the 55 patients that they were able to find for follow-up in both single as well as multiple level disease. 
We also, there were studies that were published that took a look at the range of motion and the outcome after total disc replacement, Dr. Hung, and they looked at 38 patients, a little over eight year follow-up again, and the patients that had more motion correlated with a positive clinical outcome. So it's not just putting in a device that doesn't move, it's putting a device that moves with a surgeon that understands the technology and how to put this device in and to maintain it to move for the disc that's diseased because clearly there appears to be a trend that the motion correlates with the overall outcome. But just about a dozen years ago, this was published by one of my friends, um, Marinus de Cloyver in the Spine Journal in Europe. And at that time, and we've evolved now, another 13 years, they didn't think that there was sufficient data in disc replacements to prove for performance, safety, efficacy, maybe still experimental. And I think since then we've answered a lot of these questions that have removed it from the experimental issue or had concerns regarding safety and efficacy. This was published in the Spine Journal, also looking at 42 patients and the clinical outcome of which are the best patients. And about 24% of the patients had radiographic evidence of adjacent disease. And what we found was those patients with the least amount of motion in the disc, that's between 1.8 and 5.8 degrees, had the highest incidence of the next disc becoming problematic. So maybe motion does have a positive impact on getting the ideal treatment in these patients. So patients that had more than five degrees of motion clearly had better, less adjacent level disease. There's been a number of studies since then that have looked at different technologies. This one was one of the first ones that was published in the Charité. It's subsequently been obsolete or removed from the market by the company. And they looked at patients at six weeks, three months, six months, 24, 12 months and 24 months compared to a very historic fusion device that nobody uses in the lower right called the BAK cage. This was the lumbar pro disc, which we at the Center for Spine and Orthopedics was actively involved with in both one and two level disease with some outstanding clinical investigators around the United States. And half the pa uh, 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 a large percentage of the patients got a fusion and a large percentage of patients got a disc replacement. It was called a two-to-one randomization. So you can see that two patients essentially got a disc replacement for every one patient getting a fusion. And the outcomes was outstanding. We looked at 10 measures of success and the percentage of patients that met all 10 measures of success went into the overall outcome. <clears throat> now there have been complications and we can see here that patients have had fusions or disc replacements that didn't hold in place or disc replacements that were dislodged or dislocated. But the reality is about 150, and now in 2016, I would probably say close to 250,000 patients across the world have had disc replacement technology. Um, we're proud to be one of the centers of excellence that have an extensive experience in North America of multiple level and single level discs in a variety of different implants um, and can really assess patients on what the best overall outcome is because we have really good class one data. That means randomized prospective clinical trials on disc replacements. On the first disc that was evaluated in North America, the SB Charité here, you can see that there was some class one data published, there was some prognostic data published, there was class four data that was therapeutic published with a variety of different, I listed the authors here for your reference, and we have similar with the pro disc, and we've had a number of studies published in the last decade on looking at short and long-term outcome of disc replacements um, and what the real benefit in these prospective randomized clinical level one evidence. One of the measures of outcome in degenerative disc disease is called the ODI, Oswestry Disability Index. It's a validated test where patients fill it out to get an understanding of their functional improvement following a spine surgical procedure. So this was to take a look, this slide, of demonstrating the percentage of patients in the fusion as well as the disc replacement group that had a, a functional improvement of over 15 points. So about 71% of patients had a functional improvement over 15 points. If a patient said, I feel great, I'm back to work, I'm doing everything, so I have occasional back pain and a few other things and had a 13 or 14 point improvement, it would have not been listed here because these were only the percentage of patients that had a greater than 15 point improvement. But when you compare the reoperation, we see that the reoperation rates and disc replacements is almost um, half of what we saw the reoperations in fusion, making the overall improvement imp compared to that of a fusion better. So the percentage of patients that met all the 10 criteria of a fusion versus a disc replacement 
that the disc replacement tend to have a better overall functional improvement in outcome compared to fusion. And when we ask patients, would they consider having surgery again? The answer, about 81% of patients at two years following disc replacement surgery or 86 in a different clinical trial compared to about 10% less than that in a fusion. So <clears throat> the fusion locks the patient in position. The disc replacement allows the patient to find their own balance over time. <clears throat> and the best outcome is to take a look at this. In fusion, we look at fusion. We look at alignment. We look at the biology. And we look at whether or not the patient got a decompression. That's the measures that we look at for outcome when we assess fusion or a fusion in any patient for the last three or four decades. The bar has changed when we look at disc replacements. Now we're looking at something much more complex. We're looking at the functional outcome, the stability, the alignment, the biology, not just fusion. So the overall becomes a three-dimensional cube of looking, what's the revision rate? How did we balance out the spine? What is the stability? What is the function? What's the long-term success of the device? So the bar has changed dramatically. The outcome measures we have a lot of data with, and that's why picking the right patient at the right phase of their disease and giving them the options to help understand the pathology is really critical. So in summary, lumbar disc replacements, they improve the function. They decrease the revision. They have a higher patient satisfaction. And we think when we take a look at disc replacements versus fusions and patients that don't need a fusion, that means they don't have an instability or an iatrogenic instability or severe stenosis, maybe a disc replacement at the right phase of their disease may give a better functional outcome. And that's how we tend to think when we treat our patients, the same as if we treat our family and friends in 2016 for disc disease only that is refractory to all types of conservative modalities. We think a disc replacement may be a better alternative as friends don't fuse friends and we treat our patients the same as we would our own family members. So in summary, 2016, disc replacements and fusions, we have a lot of data. 15 years worth of data since we started the clinical trials. And I think we also have 15 year experience in managing a variety of complex conditions in patients to improve their outcome. We're blessed at the Center for Spine Orthopedics to see patients from all over the world that come here for this particular technology and expertise and discuss that. We see patients that send us their studies, they then ultimately travel to Denver, and we can give them the best technology in the experienced hands. Our model is to offer all the patients the most advanced spine technology in experienced surgical hands. Thank you for your time this morning and hope that gives you a little bit of an overview upon understanding the outcomes of total disc arthroplasty.